When it comes to making character feathers, it is important to get the texturing just right. And one important aspect of texturing is the ability to mix in the feather texture with the overall color variation along the character's surface. So in this tutorial, we'll be learning how to do just that with Ornatrix hair plugin for Maya. I have this good looking starting mesh of an eagle provided to us graciously by Alireza Akbari. We'll be using this mesh to place some feathers and to texture the feathers using our color variation method. So first thing I will do is just unhide my feathers layer and here I just added a feathers groom on top of this character. As you see all of the feathers are the same length and I didn't really bother to set the distribution maps or the length maps or anything like this and it's using the default surface comb to sort of orient these feathers on the character but for the purpose of this tutorial I'm not going to bother to go and style the feathers realistically because we're just concerned about the texturing at this point. If you want to learn how to make more realistic feathers for this character by controlling all of the parameters I just described there is a set separate feathers tutorial available to you on YouTube and Vimeo. So at this point, as you might have noticed, our base mesh does have a texture in it which provides some color variation along the character's surface. And this texture sort of defines the different colors along the character's surface. For example, the feet are being yellow color and the rest have this base feather colors which were painted separately in Photoshop. To start out, let's just select the feather mesh over here and if we look at its Ornatrix stack, you can see that it has a mesh from Strands node applied at the very top. So we are getting a Maya mesh as a result and we're just going to right click on it and assign it a new favorite material which is going to be Lambert. If you go over to the attribute editor the Lambert material can be accessed now. It is at the very end of our list and we're just going to rename this material to feathers material for organizational purposes. So as a first step let's set some diffuse texture for this character. I'm going to go and assign a color map value and I'm going to choose from this list going all the way down to use the layered texture. So we have one layer by default and it is green. What we want to do is assign the same texture as we have on our base character. I'm going to click on this and for the color again I'm going to go and assign a texture and in this case it's going to be a file texture. So I'll scroll all the way up and select the file and then I will select the file name of my texture. This texture is the eagle texture which is based on the surface of the character and when I do that you can see that we are getting some nice color variation but we don't really have a per strand feather texture, which is something we're going to tackle next. The problem right now is that each one of the strands has a UV set which contains the texture coordinates which vary along the mesh length. And this is great when we have this color variation texture, but we also need to be able to have a feather texture applied to each one of the strands, which means that we need to have a separate UV set which is going to have a complete 0 to 1 UV range across each one of the strands and the same UV space is going to be present on all of these strands individually to be able to apply a separate feather texture onto each one of them. To do this we first need to go back into our mesh from strands node and go into the mapping coordinates. By default the mapping channel count is set to 1 and this means that the output of this mesh from strands node will produce just one UV set for the whole mesh and in this case we see that this UV set is not per strand coordinates which which means that we have a variation along the whole mesh and the UVs are not being generated per each strand. Then we have additional parameters like the mapping type which is currently set to have one UV coordinate output for each single vertex of our resulting mesh. Alternatively, we can also set it to have one UV coordinate to be created per each segment or even per each root of our strand, but this is not really important in this tutorial. Finally, we have a coordinate stretching parameter and this is just important if you want to be able to vary the UVs a little bit per each strand while still retaining the variation along the whole mesh. So to create this second UV set which was going to contain our feather texture, we're going to set the map channel count to 2. And then in the selected map channel index, we're going to set it to 1. Initially, we were editing the first map channel whose index is 0. So if we started to edit the parameters now, it would still apply to that same first map channel. And if we set this value to 1, now we start editing the second map channel which we are generating. So after I set this to 1, all I need to do is change this option to per strand coordinates. And this will ensure that each strand will have its own set of UV coordinates, which are the same for each strand 
and this will allow us to add a feather texture onto each one of these strands. So this is all the setup that is required in our mesh from strands node and now we're ready to jump back into the material and do some editing there. So I'm just going to hop back into my feathers material. I'm going to go back into the color node and I will add another layer by just clicking into the empty space here and then I will select this layer and inside the color I'm going to assign another map and this time this map will have our feather texture. I have pre-created this primary wing medium texture and this just contains our diffuse feather. Let's just rename this from file 4 to feather texture and it's probably a good idea to go back and rename the other texture as well. So I will rename this overall layer texture to our layered feather texture and then I will go into the first file that we created and I will just set the name to surface variation and this is good to have because in Maya these things can get out of hand pretty quickly and it's good to have some kind of reference in the way of names for your textures and objects. So once I've done this I can go back into this layered textured and I can change the alpha value from zero to something else and as you can see we are now blending the two textures together but if I decrease this alpha opacity here the texture of the feather is applied but it's applied across the whole mesh and not on top of each strand individually and we want to change that so the next thing we will do is we're going to go into the windows relationship editors and in there we'll find the UV linking and use the UV centric option to open the relationship editor. When I open it and once I have selected my feathers here as I have now, you can see that on the left side we have the two UV sets that we have created and on the right we have our feather textures. If I click on map one, which is the first mapping channel that our mesh from strands operator generates, you can see that it's currently applied to both of the textures that we created. However, I want to set the map two, which has the individual per strand coordinates to be the mapping channel for the feather texture. So to do this I first select the map 2 and then I select the feather texture option. And now as I do that if I go back and zoom into my feather you can see that now each one of the strands has the feather texture applied into it and at the same time it is blended with the overall hue variation on top of our mesh. To make the effect even more interesting instead of the over blending mode we can change this to a multiply blending mode and then we just set the alpha to the maximum. In my case, the feather texture is colored. It would be better if it was actually grayscale, but the color values in the two textures will be multiplied with each other, which is going to give us a stronger effect. The last thing that we can notice is that we are getting some black parts on our feathers, and these are the parts of the feather texture that are supposed to be occluded due to transparency, and currently they aren't. So to fix this, I'm going to go into the transparency slot of my material, and I'm going to assign it again a file, and I'm going to pre-select an alpha text texture which I have created for my original diffuse texture and it just contains the black and white values showing where the feather is supposed to be visible and where it's supposed to be hidden. So I'll open this and initially it's not going to give us the correct result but this is again because the wrong UV set is being applied to this texture. So to fix this I just go back to my UV centric relationship editor. I select my mesh and then again I will select map 2 and I will again apply this to this new texture that we just assigned. I just went and quickly fixed my mistake of not renaming this feather alpha texture so it's now called feathers alpha texture and after I assigned this map 2 to the feather alpha texture I now have a proper alpha channel assigned to my material and it is again using the second UV set generated by our mesh from strands node. So at this point as you notice we both have our feather textures and then we have the hue variation which comes from the overall base mesh texture and this is evident by a great effect that we have when zooming out and looking at the overall mesh especially at the feet because our character now looks a lot more interesting and it gives us a lot more power by just using one simple texture for the feather and making it change along the character surface. Of course we can use multiple feather textures and we can also use the different feather shapes along the character's body but again this is covered in a separate tutorial. So I hope this gives you some good insight into texturing your feathered characters and you can use this to add some style and realism in your own projects. Thank you very much for watching.